All right, five, we got the region um, enclosed by these graphs of g of x and h of x. So g of x is a trig function, negative two minus plus three cosine of pi over two x, and h of x is six minus two times the quantity of x minus one squared. And it's also bounded by the y-axis and the vertical line x equals two. Part A, find the region of R. No, find the area of R, same thing. Okay, so G of X would then be this bottom guy. How do I know? Because, well, so you can check, you can obviously check, of course, um, but um, you can kind of see it follows that trig pattern, but you can check just to be sure. Um, plug in zero, negative two plus three times the cosine of zero, negative, you know, this will be one, negative two plus three is one, and then you know that's there. And same thing here, you can check when you plug in zero, six minus two times this whole thing will be one and you get zero four. So this is G of X, this is H of X. So to find the region of, or find the area of R, you essentially want to make sure you set up your integral correctly. So R is going to be equal to the integral from zero to two. And it's going to be the top function minus the bottom function. So it's going to be H of X minus G of X. And then you just have to, it's really going to come down to doing the correct um, algebra and integration um, calculation. So um, what I like to do here is um, for h of x, I like to expand this first so I don't make a mistake. So this will be six minus two times x squared minus two x plus one, six minus two x squared minus or plus four x. And then this will be plus or minus a two and those six and that minus two will cancel. So then it'll be minus two x squared plus four X plus four. And this will be the, um, the equation for H of X. Let me go through this down here to show the work more neatly. So R would be equal to the integral from zero to two. H of X would be that. So I'm gonna have negative two X squared plus four X plus four minus G of X minus a negative two plus three cosine of pi over two x dx. So right away here, not right away, but you can see that the four and the minus negative two make a six. So that just becomes a six. You don't want to write the whole thing over, just make sure that's a six. And the rest we can start integrating by taking the antiderivatives. Antiderivative of negative two x squared will be negative two x cubed over three plus then four x squared over two. This will be a two, two x squared plus a six. So then this will be a plus a six x minus uh, three cosine, antiderivative of cosine is sine of pi over two times x all over pi over two endpoints from zero to two. And again, we just be careful we don't mess up by plugging our values in. So plug in two in first, we get negative two times eight, negative two times eight, or negative two times two cubed, negative 16 over three plus two times four, two times two squared, so plus an eight, plus a six times two, so plus 12, minus um, this becomes a six over pi times the sine of, sine of pi, because the two and the two there cancel, And minus now, zero, 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 you're plugging in zero now, 
and the sine of zero is just zero. So this whole second part becomes easy, it's just zero. And then now we just finish calculating this. 16 over three plus 18 plus 12, or I'm sorry, negative 16 over three plus 20. And this, again, sine of pi is zero. So this falls away, this, that doesn't matter. So it's just negative 16 over three plus 20 combining fractions. This is like 60 over three and it'll just be 44 over three. You usually don't have to, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say you don't have to reduce it to fraction because they're not testing your algebra and you don't get a calculator, but usually I like to do it this way. But if you're not confident and you're, you're afraid you're gonna make a mistake, just leave your answer like this. This is good enough to get full credit on that part. All right, part B. Region R is the base of a solid. For the solid at each x, the cross section perpendicular to the x-axis has an area of one over x plus three. Find the volume of the solid. So cross section, if it's perpendicular to the x-axis, it's this length. This would be a cross section. This would be a cross section A of x. So we're integrating all these cross sections. Again, we don't know what the shape is. Um, but um, what matters is that you to find the volume of this, this is simply just gonna be the volume being equal to these crocs, these cross sections being integrated from zero to two. So one over x plus three dx. That's it, it's not really telling you anything else to do. So you just have to integrate this so this will be the natural log of x plus three integrating from zero to two. So then this will plug it in two, natural log of five minus natural log of three. And that's it, that's your answer because you don't need it, you can't use the calculator, so that's your calculation. Simple. I guess they're really testing that you know that um, general setup. All right, in part C, write but, not, but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated about the horizontal line Y equals six. Okay, so we're gonna rotate about this line, this one, this will be the line Y equals six. So you're gonna rotate this like that. Now remembering, what um, the volume of a solid revolution would be, that's gonna be equal to pi times the integral from the endpoints A to B. When you have a solid revolution with a hole, in this case you will, it's gonna be the large radius squared minus the small radius, small r of x squared dx. Let me use some colored pens to kind of show this easier. So the key is to figure out what's the large radius and what's the small radius. Now, when you're revolving around a line or an axis, the large radius is the is the basically the the function that's farther away from this line in any direction. It just matter. It doesn't matter if you're going downward farther away or upward farther away or sideways. In other words, see so you have two lines. You have this line and this line. So the large R of X would be this from here to here. This would be your large R. Because this, this again, if I, if I pick this point here, this value would be large R. That's farther away from the axis of revolution. Don't worry about if it's a lesser value in terms of the actual quantity. This will be your, the g of x will be the farther r. The smaller r just be the small r of x is just this little blue line or turquoise line. It's the closer line. Now the equation for large r of x here would be six minus g of x.
and the equation for the small r of x would be 6 minus h of x. And then from there, you just put those in there. So the equation for your volume would be equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 2. Large r of x squared, in, you just put 6 minus g of x squared. Oops, I don't need to put double. 6 minus g of x squared minus 6 minus h of x squared. And this is just your answer. This is your solution for that. You don't have to solve it. They just want you, they, they, they want to see that you know how to set this up. These usually are like, this is really logical. Like once you can, once you can um, visualize this, these actually become, I like these problems, but they really can mess with your head if you overthink them. But again, practice this stuff. Um, a lot in your just from basic problems in your textbook um, because on the AP exam once you master this stuff the good thing about these types of problems they, they, they're not you really don't have like harder versions of them so to speak like once you pick up on the idea they're not going to be one is not really going to be significantly harder than the other anyways I hope that helps any feedback is um, appreciated and let me know if you um, have any requests or topics you want me to cover before the AP exam and please subscribe. That's going to help me stay motivated to make more videos. So good luck.